And the United Nations believes two million people have left Ukraine in order to seek refuge from the Russian bombardment. Yeah, the UK has so far granted 760 visas to fleeing Ukrainians. Yeah. Can I speak to former UK ambassador to the UN, Jeremy Greenstock, who joins us now. Mr Greenstock, good morning. Thanks for your time today. Good morning. Do you sit at times like this and do you, do you itch? Do you, do you wish you were back in the thick of it? Do you think you would have a role to play? Uh, I'm pretty glad I'm not in government at this moment. It would be pretty tricky to be handling all these issues. But yes, you remember the days of policy recommendations and watching uh, wars happen. I was involved in the Iraq war fairly intimately uh, and uh, dealt at the United Nations with some pretty horrific uh, examples of conflict around the world. But this is a really bad one, the Russian attack on Ukraine. I'm appalled at what my fellow permanent members of the Security Council, the Russians, are doing at this moment. They are ripping up the international order in order to take over Ukraine, and it's doing a lot of damage to the UN as such. It is, isn't it? I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, is the Security Council finished? No, of course not. Uh, there's a long way to go for the UN, but, you know, the UN is 75 years old, and international institutions in particular, perhaps all institutions, including our own domestic ones, fade with the passage of time if they don't reform. And they're very difficult to reform when uh, every member has its own uh, national interests involved in it and don't want their particular place to be changed. So uh, it, the, the fact is that in international affairs nowadays, national policymaking is taking over from the international collective that the UN formed. And the Russians so, so have Jeremy, taken that, that a step further to, now with their attack on Ukraine. But surely that's got to change, Sir Jeremy. When Isabel was saying there, has, has there to be a form or is the, um, the Security Council finished? At the very least, does it have to be reformed in terms of who gets a veto? Yes, I would say that uh, that does need to change. I, I think the veto uh, has gone on too long and has damaged the effectiveness of the UN. But against that, you have to remember, the great powers would not have joined the UN as the US uh, did not join the League of Nations between the two world wars uh, if they didn't have special privileges. They just wouldn't have contributed. We've had 75 years of virtually no conflict between the great powers, and that's been of great advantage to our generation. Now it's beginning to fade, it's getting a more dangerous world, and I do worry about the where, where the UN goes from here. Sticking with diplomacy, a lot of people still scratching their heads about why the Russian ambassador has been allowed to stay in the UK. We had uh, someone I'm sure you've worked with in the past before on our programme, Sir Christopher Mayer, the other day, saying for him, he understands why, because if you stop talking, then there's no hope. But he also thought he should go. What's your view? I prefer to keep channels open. Uh, he's not doing any damage here. He's sending perhaps recommendations back to his government that come out of British public opinion and political discussion and decisions we're taking. I would much rather channels were open than that we just closed everything down and didn't talk. There needs to be a way out of this corner that President Putin has painted himself into. Uh, obviously, we're not going to do business with Russia for many years to come. Russia has damaged its international relationship extremely badly. But not everybody in the world is on the side of the West. Uh, a lot of people were very angry over the invasion of Iraq, were very angry over other things that yeah. the United States uh, and the West has done. So there are different opinions around the world, and they've got to be discussed.